Welcome back. In this video, I wanted to go over Amazon Machine Images, or AMIs. Now, we have briefly discussed AMIs in a previous lecture, but in this video, I wanted to go a little more in depth. AMIs are used to give the necessary information to launch an EC2 instance. You can think of an AMI like a cookie cutter because they provide an outline of how your EC2 instance will launch. And just like cookie cutters, you can reuse AMIs over and over again to launch and create other EC2 instances. Now, you can get AMIs that are provided by AWS, or you can create your own. We have already used the AWS provided AMIs in a previous lecture to create our EC2 instances. AMIs that you create can have configured software or services tailored to what you need for your workload, which can help reduce time to operation because it already has all the dependencies it needs to work. This makes everything easier, but this also means we have to maintain this type of AMI. So, this type of AMI is more like the cookie cutter on the left. We also have community provided AMIs and the AWS Marketplace AMIs, which are AMIs that are created by an individual or company for a specific workload, like firewalls. Some of these are free and some cost money, just something to be aware of. Another thing to keep in mind is that some AWS AMIs are region-based, which means that they are only available in certain regions. Also, when you create an AMI, it will only be available in the region you created it, but you can copy it to another AWS region to make it available there. We will first launch an EC2 instance. In our main console, we can go to our EC2 service. Click on the Launch Instance button. We can then select the Amazon Linux 2 AMI. We can then select the T2 Micro Instance. Now, for our instance configuration, we will copy and paste the code provided for this lesson, but only copy lines 1 through 11. This user data script will create an Apache server, and create the Apache default test page. We can leave everything else in its default configuration except for the security group. I will choose my EC2-lab security group. We can click on review and launch and then on launch. We can confirm we have the existing key pair and then click on launch instances. After the EC2 instance is done launching, we can copy the IP address and paste it in our web browser. And as you can see, it displays the default Apache test page. If you can't see the test page in the browser like we have here, just give it a minute or two and it should display once the Apache server is running. Now that our EC2 instance is fully launched and we can see the Apache test page, we will go back to our EC2 instance page. We can then right click on our EC2 instance, go to where it says images and templates, and then click on create image. In the new window, I will name my image demo AMI. We can leave everything with its default configuration and click on create image. This is going to create an AMI that has the Apache server pre-installed. Now, in our left-hand side, under Images, we can click on AMIs. You should now see your brand new image. If we scroll a little bit to the right under Status, we should see Available. If it says Pending, you won't be able to see it if you go create an EC2 instance. Once the AMI is in the Available state, you can either launch the instance from this page by selecting your AMI and clicking on Launch Instance from Image or by doing it the normal way. Since I'm already here, I will click on Launch Instance from Image. I will use the T2 Micro Instance type. 
And under configure instance, if we scroll down to where it says user data, we will paste in the second portion of the provided code. We can leave everything else in its default configuration except for the security group. I will choose my EC2 lab security group. We can click on review and launch, and then on launch. We can confirm we have the existing key pair and then click on launch instance. Now we will have to give the EC2 instance a minute to run the user data script we configured, but after it's done running, we should be able to copy and paste the IP address of the EC2 instance in the web browser. After we do that, we should now see the instance IP address of the EC2 instance in the HTML page. I hope in this video you learned a little more about AMIs and how to create them. I'll see you in the next video.